presentation and uh, next we will move on with dr uh, akash deep biswas scholar normal age superiority italy and the presentation is on a computational study on the hydration shell properties of antifreeze and non antifreeze uh, akash deep biswas uh, unmute yourself and you can start your presentation by sharing your screen yeah can you hear me yeah we can yeah, hear you sure. can you share your screen please yes i'm trying to share my screen yeah. can you see my that's screen fine. yeah that's fine so you can okay, go ahead that's great okay so put it here okay so um on december 2016 i came to pisa from a very remote place uh, called as uh, tejpur it's in the northeast india and it took me around one day and 19 hours to do this exciting travel and start my phd here in pisa in scuola normale superiore of the pisa and um, every time i think about that day i i get afraid and frozen because it was a whole new world for me and i never forget that day it inspires me every day i will try to speak a bit slow because i have uh, two different accents indian and also a bit of italian accent so uh, to get accustomed i will try to speak a bit slower well uh, before starting my uh, phd i i worked on uh, uh, mosquito order and receptor protein and i saw some interactions with various chemicals to inhibit that protein and uh, i uh, it was my master's thesis and after that i worked as a junior research fellow as you know, and i was working with metalloproteins uh and my last um, role was uh, uh as a project uh, associate and i was working for boeing i shifted to mechanical department in iit kanpur there i was modeling and uh, cross linking polymer uh, which is used to make engines and flights of uh, of airplanes so it was pmr 15 after which i uh, shifted to uh, pisa four and a half years ago to start my phd well um this picture uh they are my two favorite uh, characters jack and rose and um it it makes me smile because of the romance but this is actually a very tragic picture many people died on that tragic incident and uh, uh, there are uh, i i i'm sure that there are so many people out there who knew how to swim but they they could not uh, survive one of the main reason which comes to my mind is because of the uh, super cold water and this picture just gives us a message that humans cannot survive in sub zero temperature but how about ocean pout this is an example of an ocean pout and there are other examples such as uh, insect uh, sprouts but worm we can also think about other animals plants fungi bacteria etc who survives in sub zero temperature so in 1950 uh, a, uh, a norwegian scientist kolander set out to explain how arctic fish can survive in water like colder than the freezing point of their blood and uh, uh, in 1960s another scientist uh, arthur t varies uh, isolated a protein which is known as antifreeze protein i would like to bring your focus here uh, on this two part this uh, blue part is ice binding site and the red or the green red part is non ice binding site i will be referring uh, it as ibs the rest as nibs uh, throughout my slides so uh, why do we study antifreeze uh, and uh, what is the importance so first uh, it is widely used for food technology and cryopreservation and um, can we also think about uh, increasing freeze tolerance of crop plants and uh, it may help us in extending the harvest season in colder climates uh, can we also think about other medical applications I mean, a numerous fields would be able to benefit from this uh, protein if it is able to protect the tissue damage. Uh, it may enhance preservation of tissues or for you know, transplant in medicines. Here, we do not study about any any application of of this protein. Rather, we we like to 
see the water. I, I, we focus more on the water layers of this uh, protein and we try to see the shell thickness, the volume, shell volumes, the chemical properties of these proteins. Here, uh, if, I, if, if you can see there's a pink part, this pink part is taken as the NIBS, a small part of the NIBS, which has the same uh, surface uh, solvent accessible surface area as the IBS. We, 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 I will talk about it later, but just to not confuse uh, you, uh, I, I wanted to explain it here. So how does this protein work? This protein basically has this ice binding site, which binds to the ice nucleus, and uh, it is thought to inhibit uh, the uh, growing ice when the temperature drops. So what happens exactly is that these are the proteins which binds to the ice surface, the red parts of the proteins, and when uh, they irreversibly get absorbed to the uh, ice surface, uh, the and we um, just decrease the temperature, uh, the ice starts growing and it grows in a convex surface, uh, which forces the other water molecules to join join here, and uh, which creates this convex growth and uh, thus it creates um, a, a inhibition uh, within within the uh, proteins adjacent uh, protein mo protein uh, molecules. And what I exactly mean by innovation is that, let's say this is the crystal, ice crystal, and uh, is the melting point of the, of the ice. And as the temperature goes down, let's say uh, one, minus one degree centigrade, minus two degrees centigrade, minus three degrees centigrade. So it doesn't allow the ice to grow farther. And uh, at certain point, every, everything has a threshold. Uh, and thus this protein also has this threshold. And after a certain limit of the drop down of temperature, the ice starts growing again. So this point is called as a stress uh, freezing point. And the, this, uh, uh, this mechanism is uh, thermally stressed. Uh, the temperature uh, through which it can stop the ice growth uh, is known as high stress gap. To uh, note uh, um, similarities and dissimilarities with our proteins, uh, we took a different set of uh, pr other proteins. Uh, we took uh, different types of other protein having different functions, and we termed these as uh, non antifreeze proteins. What we exactly uh, did, we took the protein, we did molecular dynamic simulation, and then uh, we, we computed the uh, geometric center. From this geometric center, we created uh, the covariance matrix for the uh, protein atoms. And, uh, and then after creating the covariance matrix, uh, we, we diagonalized it to get the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Let's say these are the eigenvalues. And um, after we got the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for all the proteins, we, we treated this, uh, the, the proteins as, uh, as uh, we, are, we are just approximating uh, these as ellipsoid and thus um, uh, we, 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 we get, uh, protein, uh, we, we, we treat it as a protein ellipsoid and we get the solvent uh, molecules just beside at the, at the proximity of the proteins. So what we did, we get the, uh, we get the average uh, protein ellipsoid. This is the average protein ellipsoid and we get the uh, axis, three axis. From here, we just slowly increase our uh, protein ellipsoid uh, from, with 0 0.03 nanometer. And then we reach, when you reach at 0 0.2 nanometer, we take it as uh, effective protein ellipsoid. And you, in this picture, you can see uh, this is the effective protein ellipsoid and the water molecules, which are really at the vicinity of these proteins. And further, we divided these water molecules into, into um, various uh, parameters. We took the water molecules, which are inside the uh, protein ellipsoid, effective ellipsoid, and outside the protein ellipsoid. We got, we got the shell, we got the shell volume, the shell uh, length, etc. So uh, basically, we, we took uh, these few um, parameters to go further with our research. We got the volume of the shell, the solvent accessible volume, and which are inside this effective protein ellipsoid and outside the protein ellipsoid. And uh, uh, this is the uh, volume of the whole protein, which, is, which we uh, refer as excluded volume. Uh, the whole red part is the protein. 
So uh, what we uh, did next, uh, we took uh, the, um, uh, we, we already have the effective uh, excluded volume and uh, we calculated the mean number of solvent molecules inside the effective uh, protein ellipsoid and we saw that uh, these uh, mean number of solvent molecules just increases with the size of the protein. As the size of the protein increases, the number of water molecules inside them increases. So it gives us a, as a evidence that it has to do the something, the, the uh, water density or, or the uh, mean number of solvent molecules inside this protein ellipsoid has to do something with the, with the size. So we went further and uh, we, we created uh, um, a fictitious water molecule and we want actually we here we wanted to compare the solvent properties inside uh, the hydration shell uh, with the properties of the bulk water. So what we did, we constructed these uh, uh, fictitious hydration shell and how did we do that? We took a uh, protein and we did the molecular dynamic simulation and then we took a uh, bulk water with we did molecular dynamic simulation and then taking uh, uh, 10,000 different uh, uh, structures uh, from from the protein we we, we created this uh, bulk environment for each of the for each of this protein and then we created the 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 we, we we know the number of water molecules we know the volume of the shell the excluded volume which is the protein volume and we get the density so we got the density of uh, water around this protein and the density of uh, water bulk water around uh, the fictitious uh, environment and we plotted them against uh, the distance and when we plotted them against the distance we see that the at the very vicinity at the proximity of the protein the the the, the water density is very high and when it goes uh, away from the protein this 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 water content uh, goes low and at around one nanometer distance so it, it goes so flat so this gives an, us an idea uh, how long um, how how big should be the hydration shell what should be the should be the biggest uh, water uh, ellipsoid hydration shell and it also um, gave us the uh, idea about uh, about the, the, the number of uh, water molecules which are uh, which are really near uh, to this protein and uh, at around this uh, point it reaches the bulk which means that this protein cannot affect the water molecules after one nanometer distance so uh, what we did, uh, we uh, we got the raw shell, uh, the density of the shell, and from it we uh, we calculated the relative density increment uh, with respect to the bulk, and uh, we got the eta, which we called as relative density increment, and we plotted it against the uh, sh shape of the proteins and also the hydrophobicity of the surface, uh, the hydrophobicity of the surface of the proteins. And uh, from this plot, we absolutely got no idea about uh, anything. We got no correlation, no information. So we, we moved further and we plotted uh, the relative density increment with the size. And uh, when we see uh, the size, we, we got a clear information that as the uh, protein size decreases, the uh, water contained around them this decreases. That means if this is the largest protein, it has the uh, highest water content. And, uh, and uh, we wanted to see uh, where, 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 where does this uh, high water content uh, uh, stays. And we found out that uh, the water molecules uh, are localized at the cavities. They are localized at the, at the grooves and pockets of the molecules much bigger the proteins are the much cavities the much uh, bigger grooves the water molecules they go inside and 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 we get uh, the the density higher for the bigger proteins with much higher uh, grooves and uh, and uh, uh, pockets so after that uh, uh, i i remember uh, i i introduced this um, whole presentation with uh, uh, introducing antifreeze, but uh, which is referred uh, here in red, uh, but we did not get any information uh, from this. We did not find any difference between antifreeze and non-antifreeze proteins. 
So uh, what we did, we wanted to uh, go further and see what 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 exactly uh, make antifreeze uh, different, and can we can we find out any result from uh, from the hydration shell of these uh, special proteins? So what we did, we took uh, two different uh, proteins, one from insect, one from uh, fish, and then we took uh, two other proteins which are which have very similar topological uh, surfaces, and. Um, we we did the same uh, we did the same uh, thing we did the same uh, experiment but we changed a few things like we changed the water model we changed uh, the uh, uh, 3p 3p i mean uh, no not 3p three point charge water model to four point charge water model and then um, we changed the temperature but we could not see much difference here uh, at both the temperature, we did not see much difference. We did not see any difference between uh, antifreeze proteins and non-antifreeze proteins with respect to the uh, density of water. And uh, it's the same at the vicinity of the protein, the density is higher and when, when it goes uh, away, uh, it, it stays around one nanometer, which, which gives us the uh, protein hydration uh, shell uh, length. But apart from that, it doesn't give us much uh, uh, information so what we did we went further and we went uh, deep into this uh, protein and we wanted to see how the chemical surface uh, how the chemical properties are are uh, in the in the in the protein surface so what we did we took ice binding sites and uh, which are which are uh, taken from the uh, protein uh, papers and uh, similar we took uh, non ice binding sites which has similar solvent uh, accessible surface area for both the proteins and to compare them with the uh, non antifreeze protein to note the similarities and dissimilarities we took also similar structure having similar uh, sasa uh, from the non antifreeze proteins. And here I mentioned uh, as yellow hydrophobic and uh, purple uh, hydrophilic. Uh, it is because when we um, plotted the hydrophobicity of the proteins against the uh, increase uh, or the water contained, we saw a very um, very interesting result. Here we saw that the uh, ice binding sites, which uh, which are uh, the which is this part the the uh, blue part has uh, is more hydrophobic that it doesn't like water and thus the hydro uh, that the water content is very less and it happens for both the temperatures and whereas the NIBS uh, the non ice binding sites are very hydrophilic and uh, they are same for both the cases and the water content around them is very high uh, and um, we we feel that okay this has got something uh, with with the with the uh, protein uh, behavior so we went further and we we wanted to see uh, how this um, things changes and we we took a larger set now we have taken seven different uh, proteins and we took moderate antifreeze proteins hyperactive antifreeze proteins and when i say uh, moderate and hyper antifreeze, antifreeze proteins what i mean is that the, the activity like uh, the the change in the temperature gap the high stresses gap what uh, they, they they create uh, the moderate proteins create very uh, less uh, high stresses gap uh, they, and the hyperactive they create a, a huge i mean four till uh, Four Kelvin. I mean, not four Kelvin, but it's the is the difference. So uh, we went farther, and we, we we did the same 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 work. Uh, I I wanted to say here. I will go back and say I missed something. That in this case, uh, this yellow part is the ice binding site, and the rest of the part is uh, is non ice binding site. Uh, in the previous case, what we did is like we took a non ice binding site, NIBS, as, which has similar um, surface uh, solvent accessible surface area. But in this case, uh, as we know, apart from this, the rest is NIBS. So we wanted to check whether our hypothesis works for the whole NIBS, the, the silver part. And yes, it works. Uh, we can see that the IBS are falling apart and they, they are very hydrophobic and the NIBS are very hydrophilic and they have water content around them. The, the number of water molecules around these NIBS are quite higher than the IBS ones. 
So what we did, we we went to search again uh, if we can find some 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 differences uh, through the uh, row by row row fictitious uh, calculation. But we, we we saw absolutely no changes, no 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 differences. And then we calculated uh, the uh, relative density increment. And uh, here we calculated a partial molar volume of every every protein. Uh, which simply represents the size of the protein and uh, as seen earlier uh, the relative density increment is greatly proportional to the size of the protein as the size of the protein increases the relative density increment uh, increases so what we did we wanted to see uh, with respect to the activity the, can we can we uh, say some something around the activity uh, and we plotted these uh, relative density increment with the and the partial molar volume against the thermal asteresis uh, the activity of of each protein and we absolutely got no differences from here then uh, we plotted uh, the the uh, hydrophobicity with the uh, against the um, thermal asteresis the activity of the proteins and the uh, and the relative density increment at the surfaces against the activity of the protein. And here we got really interesting uh, result. Here uh, it clearly shows that as the hydrophobicity increases, the water uh, content around them decreases. And it's the same for the uh, hyperactive proteins. Uh, there is an increase in the hydrophobicity, the uh, water content around them decreases. Here uh, is the same as the hydrophilicity increases, the water content around them increases, which is higher to the uh, moderate ones. And uh, for the hyperactive uh, is the same, the, the hydrophobicity, hydrophilicity increases and the water content around them increases. But there should be some difference when I say that uh, it's a moderate protein, it's a hyperactive protein. Uh, and the differences can be seen from the NIBS, the non-ice binding sites. So you can see the uh, hyperactive uh, NIBSs are more hydrophilic with respect to the moderate ones. And the water content around these high, uh, hydrophilic uh, are the, the water content is more with the with respect to the moderate one and uh, through this uh, I would like to be uh, I, I would like to say that we are we are the second group uh, around uh, uh, our scientific community to, to focus more on NIBS. It has been two years that we are we are focusing on uh, the non-ice binding side of the proteins and we are getting really promising and interesting uh, results and we are very uh, committed in, in also publishing this data uh, soon. Um, so uh, what uh, I would like to conclude with few of the slides, I will repeat the same slides again. I would say that the increment of these hydration shell decreases for the decreasing protein sizes and um, the hydration, uh, water hydration increase lies on the cavities of these proteins. The larger the cavities, the more the water molecules get inside them, the water content around them, the density increases, water density around these proteins increases. And uh, we find absolutely no differences in terms of relative density increment uh, uh, between uh, the protein, um, antifreeze proteins and the non-antifreeze proteins. But then uh, when you go deep, we find that the ice binding sites has got uh, less uh, water content and the non-ice binding site has got more water content. And uh, one of the main thing that I wanted to bring focus, uh, I wanted to bring your focus into is that we have this hypothesis that the uh, ice, binding, ice binding site uh, they, they have less water content and they they uh, help uh, to get it absorbed to the eye, uh, to the ice surface and the non ice binding site which is basically the all the green part including the uh, protein part they have more water content and these more water content thing might help in inhibiting ice growth we still are in this phase that we are saying might we have already published one but we are we are uh, at the uh, we are really committed in publishing the second one and then we will try to uh, uh, collaborate um, with the experimental people to see uh, if our hypothesis is correct. And uh, this uh, hydrophobicity uh, of the um, hyperactive proteins brings a lot of difference. They, 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 they stand out from the moderate ones. The, the, uh, they are more hydro, hydro, hydrophilic than the uh, moderate ones and the water content around them is very 
uh, high with respect to the moderate ones and if we compare them with ips they're already high so uh, with this i would like to uh, thank my supervisor professor vincenzo barone uh, and uh, uh, my co-supervisor professor isabella gaidone uh, from university of laapula and uh, professor andrea madei uh, from university of torrecata uh, for helping me in this project and uh, there are so many things uh, that i did not show in this presentation because of the time limitation but here is my um, is my email address you may of course email me with, with questions and if there are opportunities uh, i'm looking for opportunities at this moment if there are opportunities in drug development and other things i'm really open uh, for it and with this i would really like to thank you all for your patient hearing thank you yeah thank you mr akash uh, thanks for your presentation uh, it's time for the questions uh, anybody has any question from audience may i may I ask a question yes yes please please yes. a combination of a comment and a question first of all thank you for this interesting talk which uh, shows how important um, uh, it, it is to include physical and mathematical uh, uh, thinking into our uh, dealing with proteins and with their structures and with their surroundings and so forth. Uh, however, uh, um, I'm sure that you are aware of the fact that many of us who deal with structure-based design and use X-ray structures of proteins have to decide many times upon the water molecules that are included in the structure. In many yes. cases, it's uh, dozens and sometimes hundreds of, of water molecules. Actually, it's not water molecules, but just the oxygens that we see there. And we have to add the hydrogen, which is a, a, a different problem, a combinatorial problem. But let's put that aside and just uh, um, ask you whether have you ever uh, um, thought of uh, uh, the issue of um, letting us learn which molecules should be left in the active sites and be used in order to bind ligands as they associate the ligands with the protein and which ones could be rejected all the way or uh, uh, so th this is a constant a constant dilemma that we face yeah. when we do structure based drug design yeah uh, that's one question the other is more of a comment um, you, you mentioned antifreeze proteins, but I'm, I, I assume that you are aware of the fact that uh, proteins from bacteria were used in order to form ice packets so that they will be used in order to induce rain in, in many places where, where in arid zones. Uh, I think that 20 or 25 years ago, the, um, the American Navy, uh, or, uh, or it combined with the Air Force, they had an experiment over Lake Tahoe where they formed, they, they f with, with the dead bacteria, uh, mm -hmm. uh, where the proteins are on the surface of the dried, bu dried bacteria, um, they used to uh, form um, clouds of ice where uh, which which uh, which induced uh, rain forming so that is another aspect of the connection between proteins and water yeah i i didn't know about this but i will really go back and search and it seems to be really interesting well uh, uh, answering uh, your uh, question i would like to go back to my slides where i show a few water molecules here and yes, uh, when we started our, our project, we took the um, crystal structure from the PDB database and we also had uh, water molecules beside them. So uh, our, for us, it was very, very important that the water molecules should remain there so that uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't create any, any differences, it doesn't get replaced. And then uh, during the, the like, it's, it's, it's a tedious work. It took me around uh, two and a half years to uh, code it and track each and each, each molecules, which are, 
which are near to these uh, protein protein surfaces and um, uh, and i i coded and i saw that okay these these water molecules sometimes they are there and sometimes they go away from these uh, these proteins they don't go too far but yeah they they they, they get replaced so uh, I'm I'm not a very expert in uh, in drug designing, but I am sure that these water molecules uh, should play a very important role. Uh, even sometimes, as you might know, these water molecules also comes from the uh, extra experiments or NMR experiments. They might they might not be so valid, or they 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 may be uh, playing an important role in in. in uh, drug recognition. So uh, I would like to uh, work more and go back and see, uh, read some more papers on on your question, and maybe I'll I'll, I'll write you an email with the answer. <laughs> May I continue with with one more question, a quick one? Please, please, it's a pleasure. In, in, in those proteins, about half of the surface, half of the surface in the globular proteins is a hydrophobic surface and the rest is more polar surface. And um, uh, we usually consider the hydrophobic parts to induce ice-like structures of water molecules around the hydrophobic parts and much mm -hmm. less in the... Do you see that? Do you see the... the uh, uh, I, I guess that the way to look at it is to look at the number of hydrogen bonds that each molecule forms, each water molecule forms with its surrounding. So if in water, in water solution, the number of uh, average hydrogen bonds with the G function was about 3.5 or 3.4, uh, um, is it closer to four in some parts of the, of the uh, hydrophobic areas and less in the uh, in the uh, in the other parts of the of the surface in the polar parts. Yeah, you know, uh, this is what uh, we are we are planning to do. I'm smiling because <laughs> our our vague idea was our was one that, and we are we are planning to uh, like we we establish this uh, on this concept that uh, the. Uh, hydrophobicity plays a very important role on these wa uh, water uh, sh shells and uh, more the hydrophobicity less the water contained and then it will it will get easily recognized by the by the ice surface so what we are trying to do next is that uh, create these ice layers and uh, do this do this kind of study so probably I would be able to understand uh, more clearer when we start the experiment at the next level and see also the order of the of the of the uh, uh, water uh, surrounding this protein so that's our next uh, uh, step so I would really like to uh, see uh, how interesting it can be <laughs> thank you very much then. thank you so much for your questions uh, they're, they're nice. thank you so much yeah Thank you, Akash. Uh, is there any questions from audience? If not, we will go with the next presentation.